same thing. Where you going? What you doing? What you doing? Oh, right. I'm taking right. pride. Like, I'm like, nigga, this is easy. Oh, yeah. Out. What are we talking about? Oh, we talking about opportunities? Mm -hmm. if you oh, yeah. Time, and what's those right? opportunities leading on? Uh, a quick financial wealth? Yes. Like you know oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, people. Y'all see that? Come on, give me a day. When I first started interviewing, it took me like right. two videos. It took me about an hour. We have it. Uh, so that's when I first started. Like, I was slow. Right through the joint now. No, no, man. What's happening, my good people? It is your boy PK. I know exactly how much time I got. Back with another video. How I did you? Oh, the do days of love. What's happening, my good people? It is your boy PKG. The love's back with another video. How I did you? Already know what it is. And today I'm here to talk about the opportunities that present itself in front of you and what you can do with them today. All right, so. There was about a period when uh, COVID kicked off. Everybody remembers that. Everyone lost their jobs. Everyone got sick. They didn't know what to do. Some people passed away. Sorry about all that. But in that, that ideal moment of a pandemic, there was also a moment of opportunity. And that opportunity that presented itself left people without a job and left people with thinking about different ways to make more money. Here was one of those ways that I found out immediately after losing my retail job that I had for about three years. So each and every one of these skills right here was something that I learned out of a retail network that working there would have probably made me about $100,000 if I was doing it independently. Wait, $100,000? Yes, because it's a slew of information that you have to know. And being in that retail, you're trapped into that hourly circle rage on where you're only getting paid 13 or $15 an hour, whatever it may be. But learning these skills and having these tools to your assessment may just give you the extra bag that you was looking for. So, let's get into it for a minute. Let's talk about it for a moment. Each and every one of these skills that I have up has always been something that I've used and had to learn along the way. Starting with the smart home. Any and everything that you get out of a store now, most, li most likely it will be a technology advanced device that you'll be using. And most people have to figure out how to use that device. It's either you... Figure it out or you pay somebody to come out there and do it. One of those two options. And when you're losing one of those two, it's also going into your time. Do you really want to take the time to figure out how to do something? Are you really going to be that patient on figuring out something if it were to go wrong? So with these tools that we have here, these are also the opportunities that we use just to make some extra income. So because I know a lot about smart home, because I've seen and touched a lot of things that dealt with the smart locks, I'm able to do... Smart security systems, smart lock systems, smart hub and speaker setups. Um, I'm able to do the smart device setups. What are all those? So if I go into your house and you have an Amazon Alexa or you have a Google Home just sitting on your stand and you're asking me to make that your alarm clock and also configure it into your doorbell so when your doorbell rings, that gets a ring too. All of those things incorporate with each other but require Wi-Fi and a little bit of additional skill that someone has to have if it isn't you. So, because of knowing this information piece on how to install and how to set up this stuff, you can make up an extra bag on just doing it. So, I've had to learn all these things. Just started with the smart home, one element in itself. But there were more that I went down to because I was one of those people that was considered a jack of all trades. I don't want to say I wasn't a master of none because I mastered them all. So, I moved on to doing home theater. Everyone has a TV. If you don't have a TV that isn't a flat back TV, I don't know what type of TV you're using anymore and you probably should throw it away. So, with that being said, TVs that you have are going to be bigger and they're also going to be wider, but they aren't going to have great sound. So, then when we start talking about the hookups, the things that go to it, you have your surround sound, you have your sound bar, you have your optical cords. What are these devices? Things that have to go to the TV so that you hear everything from the TV and you get that Dolby Atmos feel when you're in that movie theater or you're trying to get that surround sound feel where the vibrations from the floor make you feel as though, hey, this is an epic movie. This is about to be a great scene. You get those explicits that you don't want to use during the movie, but you're loving because you're engaged with it differently. So learning these skills on how to set up a sound system and give you that full around feel it's something that pays you out in the long run. So we started talking about how to make 100K. Just doing these two alone, these two is 100K. No more. You don't have to learn anything else, but just learning those two. Because people will always need help with these two things. How to set up smart devices. What do I need to do? I forgot my Wi-Fi password. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with this. It said it was a simple, easy, one, two, three step process, and it's not. 
hey, that's why you get a, a technician out here to do it. So learning these skills will get you some bread in your pocket. Moving on to the next one. So let's check this out for a moment. You got computer repair and you got home office setup. What are those? Computer repair. So computer tune-up, data backup, new computer setup, virus removal. We all know about those things and what they may entitle, right? So if you don't have an antivirus software system or you didn't have a firewall before you got onto a computer, you got a whole George Trojan horses on it, hey, someone's going to have to wipe, restart, refresh your computer. That person would be me. That person is the guy, the guy that's going to get it clean. The pilot is going to restart it, reinstall all your software, make sure you don't have all that good stuff anymore, and be able to use your function as if you purchased it for the first time again. So learning these skills aren't hard. promise you, you probably will see a couple of YouTube videos from me or someone else I'll preferably say myself because I've done videos on these to show you how to set these things up. Because virus removal and cleanup, uninstalling pro uh, softwares like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, 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 Access, and Outlook, all of those uh, applications that you get from Word also go into your software install and software uninstall process that you're going to do. Most people don't know how to do this, don't know where to look for, don't know where to go to, and this is all the money that they have to spend to get this thing figured out. It gets worse. It gets a whole lot worse because now we go into, hey, um, because I'm on this computer and this is a new computer for me, uh, how do I set up my email? How do I get to my account information? What do I do to look up this? So now you're having to explain and go down the secret steps on what it takes to set up all this stuff because it's going to be complicated for somebody. Just make sure that somebody isn't you. And in the process of doing that, you have a lot of things that you're going to have to put together. So say, for instance, I have a computer over here. I have a printer over here. That person wants me to have this computer talk to this printer so that it prints wirelessly. I have to do that job separately, but it also comes with its own service charge. I know that it's going to require the Wi-Fi to set that up. I know it's going to also require the password. It's going to also require the connection distance that I have or bandwidth that I'll be able to do within. So all of these parameters and things I'm thinking of before I even go to the printer to set it up. But all of this is under computer repair. So anything I touch with a computer at any given point in time, I'm lethal on. And I'm going to tear up and destroy because I'm built that way. So any of these lessons that I'm going to teach, any of these problems I'm going to fix, any of these things I'm going to do, just understand it pays you to do it. So yeah, this is a good bit of knowledge to learn. Now we go right into home office and school. Now we know why this is brought into here, right? But I'm going to go ahead and explain it anyway because I, I feel like we need to talk about it. All right. Home office is school. Most kids since the pandemic have had to go home and learn school from home. So who else would be better to come out there and set them up for success other than yourself? The person that's going to come out there and make sure the internet works. The person that's going to come out there and make sure all the programs work. The person that's going to come out there and ensure that they're able to log into all their applications and get right into what they need to get into to learn. You could be that person because it's easy. It's an easy but because you know all of this and you know the simplest part is you having to set this up for somebody else that needs it. So just understand that 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 I'm thinking for a moment and see the value in just these two steps alone. So now that we've gone over smart home, home theater setup and hookup, computer setup or computer repair and help and home office, we got two more things left. One is going to be easier than the other, but I want to make sure I talk about the first one, uh, the harder one first. TV mounting. I don't personally think that TV mounting is hard. I don't think it's difficult. I don't think it's a strenuous process. I think personally most people are afraid. If I see a TV on a wall, I think I can take it down and I think I can put it up. That's just to be honest with you. Most people don't feel that same way. And because most people don't feel that way, that means there's an avenue for revenue right there. Right at that spot, right at that moment. And you have to understand what you're approaching and how you're going to attack that. So any person that does not want to mount a TV or has a fear, you tell them that you can do it and there's going to be a service that comes with it. So any person that has that dilemma that's trying to mount a TV, depending on if it's one, two, three, uh, if it's a 55 or 65 or a multitude of 65, the price value of those TVs go up because someone wants that service done. You go out there being the specialist that you are, knowing the skills that you know, having the tools that you have and the resources that you gain from this experience of talking with me today, you'll definitely be out there able to mount a TV, put it on the wall, and ensure that it's not going to fall at any given point in time because you're built that way. And by the end of this conversation today, we want to ensure that you're built that way. So as we look into these TVs, I just wanted to talk about it because there's a lot of money to be made in that avenue as well. Out of all four of these, you could probably make $100,000 just from this alone. So, 
out of combination of all these jobs, I'm listing all the opportunities that present itself. What you can, what you're able, how far you're able, your capabilities. And I don't want to limit you on anything that you're doing. But I do want to let you know all of the steps is possible and profitable as you're learning. The last one is going to be mobile tablets and setups. There are few and small occasions where you're running to teach someone how to set up a phone. But in those moments that you do, that is also profit as well. So someone that does not know how to get into their uh, Gmail address or don't know how to use these applications, whatever the sort may be, you go in there, you give them that advice, you give them that support, you're able to make a payout because you know the knowledge. All of this stuff that I'm talking about today does not require a lot of hands-on. But as you're knowing the knowledge, you'll realize that each and everything requires you to think about it more than it requires you to do more pushing, do more turning. You have to really apply yourself in thought and how I'm going to do this. So once you understand this, the money will start flowing for you a whole lot faster and a whole lot quicker. So I gave you all this today to let you know the opportunities that are out there that presents itself. You guys can do it because I've seen someone out here that is doing it. I'm on track to possibly do it at this moment. And I want to make sure that everybody around me is on that same playing field, that same stage, because we can all stand up there together. This is 100000 in action. I'm showing you. You can do this. All of this stuff is, is not even Googleable, but you can look at it and see what can I figure out? How can I do it? There are tutorial videos on what you can do to learn more. I just don't want to limit you to say, hey, I worked at a retail store. I worked at a retail store for forever. What other opportunities can I do other than work at this retail store? I was in that same boat. I was in that same boat for about three years and I had to figure something out. This is what I figured out. Where to take my skills and my skills took me to the next level. You got to go to the next level. You can't stay stagnant. You can't stay there. You have to go to the next level. All right. So today, this is just to give you a presentation of everything that you could do to make $100,000 if you learn these skills. Each and every one of them have their own payout. But I promise you, they're going to be great when you start. All right. PKG Deluxe is in. PKG Deluxe is out, baby. Oh, no. <laughs>
And being in that retail, you're trapped into that hourly circle rage on where you're only getting paid 13 or $15 an hour, whatever it may be. But learning these skills and having this tools to your assessment may just give you the extra bag that you was looking for. So let's get into it for a minute. Let's talk about it for a moment. Each and every one of these skills that I have up has always been something that I've used and had to learn along the way. Starting with the smart home. Any and everything that you get out of a store now, most, li most likely it will be a technology advanced device that you'll be using and most people have to figure out how to use that device. It's either you figure it out or you pay somebody to come out there and do it. One of those two options. And when you're losing one of those two, it's also going into your time. Do you really want to take the time to figure out how to do something? Are you really going to be that patient on figuring out something if it were to go wrong? So with these tools that we have here, these are also the opportunities that we use just to make some extra income. So because I know a lot about smart home, because I've seen and touched a lot of things that dealt with the smart locks, I'm able to do smart security sales, smart lock systems, smart hub and speaker setups. Um, I'm able to do the smart device setups. What are all those? So if I go into your house and you have an Amazon Alexa or you have a Google Home just sitting on your stand and you're asking me to make that your alarm clock and also configure it into your doorbell so when your doorbell rings that gets a ring too. All of those things incorporate with each other but require Wi-Fi and a little bit of additional skill that someone has to have if it isn't you. So because of knowing this information piece on how to install and how to set up this stuff you can make up an extra bag on just doing it. So I've had to learn all these things. Just started with the smart home, one element in itself. But there were more that I went down to because I was one of those people that was considered a jack of all trades. I don't want to say I wasn't a master of none because I mastered them all. So I moved on to doing home theater. Everyone has a TV. If you don't have a TV that isn't a flat back TV, I don't know what type of TV you're using anymore and you probably should throw it away. So, with that being said, TVs that you have are going to be bigger and they're also going to be wider, but they aren't going to have great sound. So, then when we start talking about the hookups, the things that go to it, you have your surround sound, you have your sound bar, you have your optical cords, what are these devices? Things that have to go to the TV so that you hear everything from the TV and you get that Dolby Atmos feel when you're in that movie theater or you're trying to get that surround sound feel where the vibrations from the floor make you feel as though Hey, this is an epic movie. This is about to be a great scene. You get those explicits that you don't want to use during the movie, but you're loving because you're engaged with it differently. So learning these skills on how to set up a sound system and give you that full around feel is something that pays you out in the long run. So we started talking about how to make 100K. Just doing these two alone, these two is 100K. No more. You don't have to learn anything else, but just learning those two. Because people will always need help with these two things. How to set up smart devices. What do I need to do? I forgot my Wi-Fi password. I don't know exactly what I'm doing with this. It said it was a simple, easy, one, two, three step process and it's not. Hey, that's why you get a, a technician out here to do it. So learning these skills will get you some bread in your pocket. Moving on to the next one. So let's check this out for a moment. You got computer repair and you got home office setup. What are those? Computer repair. So. Computer tune-up, data backup, new computer setup, virus removal. We all know about those things and what they may entitle, right? So if you don't have an antivirus software system or you didn't have a firewall before you got onto a computer, you caught a hold towards the Trojan horses on it, hey, someone's going to have to wipe, restart, refresh your computer. That person would be me. That person is the guy, the guy that's going to get it clean. The pilot is going to restart it, reinstall all your software, make sure you don't have all that good stuff anymore, and be able to use your function as if you purchased it for the first time again. So learning these skills aren't hard. Promise you, you probably see a couple of YouTube videos from me or someone else. I'll preferably say myself because I've done videos on these to show you how to set these things up. Because virus removal and cleanup, uninstalling pro uh, softwares like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, 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 Access and Outlook, all of those uh, applications that you get from Word also go into your software install and software uninstall process that you're going to do. Most people don't know how to do this, don't know where to look for, don't know where to go to, and this is all the money that they have to spend to get this thing figured out. It gets worse. It gets a whole lot worse because now we go into, hey, um, because I'm on this computer and this is a new computer for me, uh, how do I set up my email? How do I get to my account information? What do I do to look up this? 
So now you're having to explain and go down the secret steps on what it takes to set up all this stuff because it's going to be complicated for somebody. Just make sure that somebody isn't you. And in the process of doing that, you have a lot of things that you're going to have to put together. So say, for instance, I have a computer over here. I have a printer over here. That person wants me to have this computer talk to this printer so that it prints wirelessly. I have to do that job separately, but it also comes with its own service charge. I know that it's going to require the Wi-Fi to set that up. I know it's going to also require the password. It's going to also require the connection distance that I have or bandwidth that I'll be able to do with it. So all of these parameters and things I'm thinking of before I even go to the printer to set it up. But all of this is under computer repair. So anything I touch with a computer at any given point in time, I'm lethal on. And I'm going to tear up and destroy because I'm built that way. So any of these lessons that I'm going to teach, any of these problems I'm going to fix, any of these things I'm going to do, just understand it pays you to do it. So, yeah, this is a good bit of knowledge to learn. Now, we go right into home office and school. Now, we know why this is brought into here, right? But I'm going to go ahead and explain it anyway because I, I feel like we need to talk about it. All right, home office and school. Most kids since the pandemic have had to go home and learn school from home. So, who else would be better to come out there and set them up for success other than yourself? The person that's going to come out there and make sure the internet works, the person that's going to come out there and make sure all the programs work, the person that's going to come out there and ensure that they're able to log into all their applications and get right into what they need to get into to learn. You could be that person because it's easy. It's an easy but because you know all of this. And you know the simplest part is you having to set this up for somebody else that needs it. So just understand that 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 I'm thinking for a moment and see the value in just these two steps alone. So now that we've gone over smart home, home theater setup and hookup, computer setup or computer repair and help, and home office, we got two more things left. One is going to be easier than the other, but I want to make sure I talk about the first one, uh, the harder one first. TV mounting. I don't personally think that TV mounting is hard. I don't think it's difficult. I don't think it's a strenuous process. I think personally most people are afraid. If I see a TV on a wall, I think I can take it down and I think I can put it up. That's just to be honest with you. Most people don't feel that same way. And because most people don't feel that way, that means there's an avenue for revenue right there. Right at that spot, right at that moment. And you have to understand what you're approaching and how you're going to attack that. So any person that does not want to mount a TV or has a fear, you tell them that you can do it and there's going to be a service that comes with it. So any person that has that dilemma that's trying to mount a TV, depending on if it's one, two, three, uh, if it's a 55 or 65 or a multitude of 65, the price value of those TVs go up because someone wants that service done. You go out there being the specialist that you are, knowing the skills that you know, having the tools that you have and the resources that you gain from this experience of talking with me today, you'll definitely be out there able to mount a TV, put it on the wall and ensure that it's not going to fall at any given point in time because you're built that way. And by the end of this conversation today, we want to ensure that you're built that way. So as we look into these TVs, I just wanted to talk about it because there's a lot of money to be made in that avenue as well. Out of all four of these, you could probably make $100,000 just from this alone. So out of combination of all these jobs, I'm listing all the opportunities that present itself. What you can, what you're able, how far you're able, your capabilities. And I don't want to limit you on anything that you're doing. But I do want to let you know all of the steps is possible and profitable as you're learning. The last one is going to be mobile tablets and setups. There are few and small occasions where you're running to teach someone how to set up a phone. But in those moments that you do, that is also profit as well. So someone that does not know how to get into their uh, Gmail address or don't know how to use these applications, whatever the sort may be, you go in there, you give them that advice, you give them that support, you're able to make a payout because you know the knowledge. All of this stuff that I'm talking about today does not require a lot of hands-on. But as you're knowing the knowledge, you'll realize that each and everything requires you to think about it more than it requires you to do more pushing, do more turning. You have to really apply yourself in thought and how I'm going to do this. So once you understand this, the money will start flowing for you a whole lot faster and a whole lot quicker. So I gave you all this today to let you know the opportunities that are out there that presents itself. You guys can do it because I've seen someone out here that is doing it. I'm on track to possibly do it at this moment. And I want to make sure that everybody around me is on that same playing field, that same stage, because we can all stand up there together. This is 100000 in action. I'm showing you. You can do this. All of this stuff is, is not even Googleable, but you can look at it and see what can I figure out? How can I do it? There are tutorial videos on what you can do to learn more. 
I just don't want to limit you to say, hey, I worked at a retail store. I worked at a retail store for forever. What other opportunities can I do other than work at this retail store? I was in that same boat. I was in that same boat for about three years and I had to figure something out. This is what I figured out. What it take my skills and my skills took me to the next level. You got to go to the next level. You can't stay stagnant. You can't stay there. You have to go to the next level. All right. So today, this is just to give you a presentation of everything that you could do to make $100,000 if you learn these skills. Each and every one of them have their own payout. But I promise you, they're going to be great when you start. All right. PKG Deluxe is in. PKG Deluxe is out, baby. Oh, no. What's happening, to my good people? It's your boy PKG Deluxe back with another vid on how I did. You already know what it is. So today I'm here to talk about TV mounting services and how much you can make out of them. Yo, it's been a crazy few months that I've been going on, but when I've been doing it, all of these services have paid up to be a whole lot of money in the overall scheme of things. And I want to make sure I break all these things down as we're going to it. So like, you have a slew of TVs that you'll go through and mount. From 32 all the way up to 82, 65, 85, you have a lot of them that you're going to do. And with those TVs, each and every one of them come with their own steps, their own mounts, their own functionalities on how that person wants them done. Why am I saying all this stuff? Because those services that you're doing for that TV add up. Why is that going on? It's because people are afraid to get in there and actually do the nit and the grit and the hard stuff there is to do. So for each TV that I put my hands on, I got a charge price for it. And it's, it ain't cheap, but it ain't high. So let's talk about it for a moment. If I come in and I wanted to do, or you wanted me to do any type of TV in your household, depending on if it's drywall, brick, or if it's outside in somebody's garage or barn, depending on what it is, I have to start off with a charge of $150 just to get it out there. Me coming out there doing the service and probably also bringing them out to you just so we know exactly what it's all going to take. So I factored in a lot of maths when I was doing all of this, right? So when you go out to do these jobs, let's say, say you do one, it, it gives you $150 if you did that TV mount. The person were to come back and want another one done, you'll probably have three or four or five clients. This adds up and builds you clientele when you go back out there the second and the third time. Now, if you were to use any of these mounts or have to come back out there and dismount or do another service to a TV, those services also pay out too. When I come out and do a dismount for anybody's TV that's moving somewhere or going somewhere, instantly $100. Immediately off the gate. Why? Because it's a hard service to do for that person and they want to make sure that that TV comes off the wall with minimal damage. A professional may have not put it up there, but a professional may have to take it down. So just keep that in mind. The remount, if I got to go in your house and put it back up, all right, cool. A professional's putting it back up there. These charge prices that I got to come up here and do for is only because I know how much it takes. You want a professional to get it done, it's going to cost a, a little bit of more money to get that professional to have it done. The reasons why is because all of the fixings that come with it. So when you get a fixed mount, tilted mount, full motion mount, all of these mounts give you full capabilities and range. Well, one of those mounts give you full capabilities and range so that you can do a, a slew of things with your TV. And the additionals that you have, in-core wall concealment and out-core wall concealment. Some people know about these, but it depends on what you're really trying to pay to make a bang out of your buck on it. So if you do the in-core wall concealment, you cut a little slice out behind the wall, give them that little piece that slides in there, and you run the cords behind it so that you never see any of your products from the backside of the TV at all. Why do they do that? Because they want to have this TV flush. They want to have it look perfect when it's up there. And anybody will want that when they're having something done in their own household. I'm not going to lie, I would too. So, when we come up to do all of these services each and every day, like let's just give it a ballpark of saying we did, I don't know, um, five jobs a day, five TV mountains. So I got five stacks of TV mounts with me. They're all going to be fixed. So that means I charge everybody at minimum $50 because I had to buy a mount. So my mounts cost me $20. I had to sell them for $50. I'm going out to make $150. I'm on track at this point to make about $2,000 in a day. $250 at least, I mean $2,000 in a week, excuse me. $250 in a day if I continue with my math being slower than I want to actually uh, give it to. So in a week's time frame, you bust $2,000 just off of TV minor services alone. What you can do with these things are totally up to you. But between this, your private clientele, and the app that you can use, you can probably make about $96,000 plus depending on how well you mount these TVs and do these services. Why do I say these numbers? Because yes, they're true numbers. We've done it. We've actually had the numbers add up for ourselves. Month after month after month, we're doing this. Why? Because it's easy. Like, you go out there, 
You, you say, hey, do you want your TV mounted? Now I'm out your TV and you got to overpay for the price because it's either me and somebody else or me and someone that actually is going to do this or me and you as in the customer client that's going to lift this thing to get it up there. Because as a perfectionist and as someone that actually is a professional, you should actually be prepared to do this at any given point in time and be able to do this stuff as well. So I get out there, knock it out, make it look nice, leave it, and now I'm getting paid for doing an easy service. I feel as though just because I'm confident. That's it. All of confidence. So I've been looking at doing this for about four months now. Doing this track plan of just figuring out the TV that you're mounting, the size that you're mounting, and giving someone a price range for can give you that $100,000 that you're looking for just off of this service alone. So if you understand and don't have a fear for getting out there to mount a TV, I just want you to see what all can pan out if you did do it. So give it a shot. Give it a go. Give it the take that it's going to need because it's some money out here to make. So let's get out here and grind for it. That's one down. So PKG Deluxe is here. PKG Deluxe is out, baby. Hey, man, if y'all interested in learning how to make like 10K a month, make sure I'm going to tag my cousin in this video. Make sure y'all DM me. Y'all better get with us. All right, what's happening, my good people? It's your boy PKG Deluxe back with another vid on how I did. And you already know what it is. Today, I'm here today to talk to my cousin, yes. Jerry. Jeremiah Reads today. A couple of questions I had inspiring on what it takes to be a motivational and inspiring entrepreneur. Those steps on what you want to take going forward, preparing yourself mentally, physically, and also spiritually when you do this thing. So he's the person today that's going to give us a, a few question rundowns to just see exactly what it takes to be that person that all of you guys are really afraid to be, but right. should step out there and do. All right, so right now, we're about to go ahead and get into it with a few of these questions, let's and I just want y'all to stay tuned in, all right? Let's get Jeremiah, it. Jeremiah, let's, let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go. Jerry. What's up? Motivational prep talking and inspiring entrepreneurs. I want you to tell them. I just got a few questions for you. One of them, what gave you the passion to pursue entrepreneurship ideas where did that come from well man you know back in the day uh you know my grandpa uh fred reeves he owned a lot of properties and he always had an entrepreneurial spirit back when they was in slavery time and mm. it was a story that my great grandma told us that um they came in and kicked them out the house kicked the family out the house so he swore to never like depend on nobody else again for mm. the lack of a better term you know what i'm saying so Correct. we've got uh 22 properties and mothers right now and um, it's been always in me. My grandpa Franklin, he was a pastor, he did taxes, a uh, teacher. He was always just a hustler, man. So he and, always and made that bag happen exactly, one way or another. Exactly. My pops, you know what I'm saying, even though he wasn't really like in, ingrained in my life, he's from New Orleans, he was doing his thing always. And it's just like, it's just really in my genetic code to really um, pursue more or be the best version of myself that I could be, which is what I like to call being wealthy because being wealthy is being the best version of yourself correct correct you know what i'm saying so i guess it's just it's just dna but it, for, as far as it not being in dna because sometimes for people it's not you basically gotta <laughs> you basically gotta want what do you want do you, what, what more do you want out of life like i've been reading the, uh, the science of getting rich and they're saying that that's another good point keep going exactly keep going. there's it tells you that in order for you to be your best happiest fulfilled self to be able to give the most and do the most in life you have to have all the resources uh, uh, open to you and to be able to get all those resources you have to be wealthy enough to be able to purchase these resources so um, being wealthy and wanting to be rich and wanting to be an entrepreneur and doing everything that you want to do in your life you're just being your best self fair 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 let me ask you another another step question all right so when you began this process on saying, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there, I'm going to sell regardless of what anyone says to me, how did you avoid those stages of doubt that people give you in the, in the beginning of saying, you can't do it, you can't make it, you probably won't have the finances? How do you avoid that part that people are really hitting you over the head with and still prevail? What does it take? Tell me about Man, it. Man, look, <coughs> you, know, you know I used to think something was wrong with me. Like, right, I, I, right, I, I, right, right. Everybody want to work. And I'm like, look, I want to do this. Like, everybody wanted to earn their label and I, earn their money. And I was like, yo, I always want to use my mind and put people in position to be able to make money. And I made money off of the decisions that I made instead of, like, me physically doing it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being a black sheep of my family in that way, it's, um, I used to think something was wrong with me. You know, my grandmother would be like, yo, you need to work. My mom... Uh, everybody who really was like big in my life 
they was like, uh, you know, you need to work. You need to, that's not that's abnormal what you're doing. You're going Correct. against the grain. Correct. So basically, um, uh, you just gotta. It, it's it's it comes to a point where a lot of people will quit, but it, at the end of the day, it's you. It's you. So you'd be basically neglecting yourself, neglecting your happiness if that's really you. If you love doing if that. you yeah, if it's you, it's you. Right. A lot of people like. You know you want to do something else. You got a great idea. You got something wonderful that you know could bring value to the people, but you're really nervous of what others may think of you, and you're really nervous of of, of just leaving that safety net and just jumping. But you got to understand if you got, you'll never know if your wings work unless you jump off the cliff. Correct. You never know if you can fly unless you actually put yourself in a position to to fly. Get out there and do it. You know what I mean? So. So, all right, cool. So since we got onto that question, I had another question because this is probably going to play a lot more towards the people who work a nine to five, who are afraid to jump out there and give this entrepreneurship idea thing a shot. So I just want to talk about that for a minute. What would you tell someone who works a nine to five, who's afraid to leave their job, who doesn't know what to do, and if their life were to end tomorrow, i.e. COVID, you know, and everything goes down, <laughs> what could they do? What could they figure out? They have to test these tools out of, of entrepreneurship for the first time, and they have to figure something out. How do they begin these stages if they've been programmed to work this 9 to 5 for 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40 years? Right. So what I want to do say is, I do want to say, if you're working somewhere and you enjoy doing it, that's kind of different. That's a lot different. Now, if you really enjoy what you do, kudos to you. Like, I used to serve tables, bartend. I really loved it, but I was just too ambitious. My brain wouldn't just chill and let me be content on that, but I really enjoyed doing that. But um, my recommendation is never just really just quit, straight up quit your job. Mm. Put your game plan together. You know what I'm saying? Do your market research on what it is that you're trying to do. Correct. You know, I mean, you can slip your toe in the water. You know, start, 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 uh, always pay yourself first, re rich dad, poor dad, you have to take a certain percentage of your money and put it into your, your investing savings, not your savings just to sit and let it in, in, in inflate, but your investing savings, you take a certain percentage of your money out every check and mm -hmm. then you put it to the side and there goes your investment uh, uh, budget, there's your business budget right there, right there. so we can strategically Start a business yes. if you want to work. Never recommend just just jumping like that. You know what I'm saying? Just migrate yourself out. Understanding your transition. You get what I'm saying? Just gotcha. like just like trans transition like smoothly. Okay. Because you know so, so, that's what we all do. We all work to where then we just transition out. Right. And I feel like every one of us has some type of trade. Like some people know how to sew. Some people know how to knit. You find that trade out on what you do, and you actually make a profit out of it by how you promote it, how you sell it. So I think, but it's that fear you got to overcome. That, that fear you got to have, like, <laughs> like dang, just, if I don't, if I don't get it in, I'm not gonna get paid. But it's just like how not? Like you just lost your job, you just lost your career, you just lost everything. Your nine to five is gone, and boom, like now I gotta go for the net. Like, like what do you, you want to do? Like, do you want to really do this or but not? You, like, you also have to seek out people who are doing the same as you. Now your circle. Mm. Your circle is really big because if you're trying to be an entrepreneur and a bunch, everybody, all your friends are telling you what you can't do, you're going to have to like, you're going to fall into like some complacency, some some, some mediocrity. You're going to be average, hanging around average people. Correct. You're going, you're, it's going to be extremely difficult to start a business, run a profitable business with people who are not trying to do the exact same thing you're doing. So you have to like, I know it might be a cliche thing to say. But you gotta change your friends up, man. Like you gotta change the people up. That's where you gotta switch up the circle, man. Right. And I'm gonna I'm tell you why the biggest point of this is gonna pip up. So I'm gonna ask this last question. I know it's gonna be very important. So let's get ready for it. All right. What books have you read or were reading? Out of fact, here we that go. That changed right your here. entire rich opinion. dad, poor dad. <laughs> I'm gonna slap this right here. Robert Kiyosaki. Like, what books were you reading that made you change your entire opinion about why I couldn't do something and why I will do something? What switched you into that motive that I'm going to get this done and it's going to do whatever I, I, I'm going to do whatever I have to take to make sure it gets done? What gave you that? Well, you know, sport, you know, playing sports back in the day, you know, playing football, you really get that, you know, once you're blessed enough to be a decent player. Like I was I was a pretty good player. So it's like, you know, you got that competitive edge. You got that going to get it done, that tenacity, that attitude. So basically, you translate that confidence into your everyday life. Now, the transition usually happens is when you was great in high school. Like, right. dog, dang, homie, in high school, you got the man, homie. So what you do 
instead of like, okay, you might not be playing sports, but you translate that into your entrepreneur career. Or if you do work, you need to be the best one there. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I was, I was a manager at Buffalo Wild Wings. I worked at Buffalo Wild Wings four months. I worked in retail, so we. I, tur- I turned it up. I was, I was managing that joint. Like yes. I'm, if I'm gonna be here, You're gonna be. The I'm best going dad. to stand out here. You feel Fair. what I'm saying? So, but. Rich Dad Poor Dad is one of my favorite books. That's where I really got uh, the Pay Yourself. Well, Pay Yourself is from the uh, Richest Man in Babylon. But Rich, ba- Rich Dad Poor Dad, Richest Man in Babylon, I really don't believe that nobody's really getting money unless they're reading books like that because it sets, them in, it sets, that, uh, the, it sets the tone for your mentality. Correct. You know, because you are what you study. Right. So, you know, you study how to shoot jump shots, you're going to be better at shooting jump shots. If you study like how to cook burgers, you're going to be cooking burgers. If you're around people watching drama, watching nonsense all day, that's, that's just what you're going to be, be in life. So a whole reality television show. There you go. That's what you become. There you go. All right. So I appreciate you asking hey, all those questions for me. You already right? know. Cause oh. <laughs> I appreciate that. So we all needed to hear that just so we know what it takes to get there. So this doesn't stop today. It begins today. Mm-hmm. So for everybody out there that's inspired to begin the, the, the pursuit on being an entrepreneur, it starts right now. Right now. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. Right now. At the end of this video, I want more and more people to give this idea a shot. Roll with it. Read some books. Do some independent thinking. Do some due diligence for yourself because the only person that this is going to hurt is you if you don't. So Understand it now. See your future later. All right. There you PKG go. Deluxe is here. There you go. Jeremiah, Jeremiah Reeves is here. Let's get we it. out, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs>